Hi, it's Saturday, October 25th. We're watching what is now Hurricane Melissa, southeast of Jamaica, just now upgraded to a hurricane by the National Hurricane Center at the 2 p.m. Intermediate Advisory just before this video, with max winds now about 75 miles per hour. The good news with Melissa today is that forecast confidence, which was quite low earlier in the week, has now increased markedly, and we essentially know what this storm is going to do over the coming days. The bad news is we're now likely to be unable to avoid a pretty major event in this region with this storm likely to go down as one of the worst hurricane impacts to Jamaica specifically and possibly for Haiti as well, just given how much rain and destruction has followed there. And other areas like Cuba and portions of the Bahamas and possibly even Bermuda will be impacted by Melissa before it's all said and done. If we look at the storm today on the visible satellite loop, uh, the storm has continued to make progress in developing an inner core. We talked yesterday about how that process had begun, and today we see that the vertical shear, which has been impacting the storm out of the northwesterly direction, has been moderate in magnitude and not quite strong enough to prevent this inner core from gradually coming together. We now have the center of circulation embedded right in the middle of all the deep thunderstorms, which are now rotating around all sides of the center of the storm. This indicates that the vortex has now more or less aligned vertically, so it's no longer tilted in the way it was over the last couple of days. And this means that it is now poised to generate a legitimate eye wall and eventually clear out the eye itself. If we look at a microwave pass from the GPM satellite from a few hours ago, it will reveal that the beginnings of that inner core eye wall are beginning to show up here. This uh, so-called cyan ring is an indication that uh, convective rain bands have encircled the core in a way that indicates uh, a well-defined structure that could lead to rapid intensification in the near future. Once a storm achieves this kind of structure with a well-defined inner ring of thunderstorms and maximum wind, it is typically poised for quick deepening after that point. This is a composite of wind speeds measured by the tail radar of a NOAA Hurricane Hunter aircraft from a few hours ago, showing that max wind ring, which is strongest on the north side. Uh, but the important structural point here is that there is this calm center with a tightly wound ring of maximum wind that is well defined around the center. That's not something that the storm had really had previously. And this is, again, an indication that rapid intensification may ensue in the near future. If Melissa is going to be prevented from rapidly intensifying, it would be due to periodic ingestion of dry air from the western side due to the persistent northerly shear in the mid-levels. You'll see plenty of cirrus outflow pushing out towards the west, so it doesn't necessarily look like there's any shear remaining, but beneath the outflow layer, there is northerly wind in the mid level. So it's possible that some drier entrainment could periodically disrupt this inner core as it's forming. But unfortunately, the baseline expectation here is that Melissa will become a major hurricane in fairly short order with a rapid pace of intensification possible over the next day or two as the eye begins to form and clear out. We're expecting Melissa to begin a drift towards the west here, moving painstakingly slowly before turning northward somewhere over the island of Jamaica and then ultimately eastern Cuba over the next few days. This, un this slow movement unfortunately gives Melissa some time with which to strengthen, which is one of the reasons a major hurricane is expected. Again, the major steering influence here, if I just zoom in on the GFS ensemble mean 500 millibar flow, you'll see that the storm is centered here. And again, there's this ridge nosing in over the Straits of Florida. That is what is forcing the storm to begin turning towards the west. And you'll see that happen on the model over the next day or two. At some point, this trough comes across the southeastern U.S. and this ridge over the Straits of Florida erodes. Once that ridge disappears, that northerly steering influence on the storm is also removed and the storm will begin to escape towards the northeast. So you'll see that happen on the model here sometime early next week. And then you can see that it's just a racetrack off towards the northeast. The storm will accelerate into the subtropical and mid-latitude westerlies, likely impacting eastern Cuba, portions of the central and southeastern Bahamas, maybe the Turks and Caicos, and then also possibly Bermuda on this northeastward tra trajectory. All these areas should keep a close eye on the forecast. 
models have come into tighter agreement now. This is a set of aids that the National Hurricane Center typically likes to use. You'll see there's a pretty tight spread of the main grouping of models now for that slow westward drift and then a turn over central or eastern Jamaica. We have seen a slight eastward shift in those forecasts in the last 24 hours. More of them were over the western half of Jamaica 24 hours ago. We have seen that edge towards the east a little bit with the average landfall location now not too far from Kingston, unfortunately. And here's an example of how that might look. This is the NOAA HAFS A high resolution hurricane model showing the 10 meter wind field here. At the initial time, this model has had the opportunity to assimilate a lot of data measured by Hurricane Hunter aircraft from both the US Air Force and from NOAA. And this model has a pretty good handle on the current storm structure. And as we go forward, we see that inner core wind ring continues to intensify. This structure again is well poised for Melissa to become a major hurricane rather quickly. And that occurs on the model as soon as late tonight or early Sunday morning. You'll see this slow westward drift and a continued intensification to category four intensity and even briefly category five before making landfall as it turns north into eastern Jamaica as a category four storm. Kingston's right here. So you can see that unfortunately on this particular model run, this would place the eye wall uh, right over the main population center of the island. Uh, this is only one model run. There is still some fudge factor here as to where exactly the eye will cross the coast. Keep in mind, we are dealing with possibly two and a half days of meandering and possibly erratic motion as we go through this painstakingly slow track. So we don't yet know with absolute precision where the landfall will occur, but uh, everyone in the island of Jamaica should be prepared for a direct strike from the inner core of this hurricane. And unfortunately, portions of the southern coastline are going to be highly prone to storm surge pushed ashore, especially near and east of the landfall point. Obviously strong winds, possibly in excess of 100 miles per hour, will impact portions of the nation and uh, heavy rainfall will persist even well before the landfall point. You'll see that you know today the rain bands are starting to encroach now and will start impacting eastern Jamaica and continue progressing westward uh, as uh, the storm gradually moves to the south of the island. So the rain will begin early, so will the tropical storm force winds. Although landfall may not occur until Monday night or Tuesday morning, uh, the tropical storm force winds could begin as soon as tonight or Sunday morning over some parts of the island. This is the National Hurricane Center official forecast showing that slow westward drift becoming a major hurricane on Sunday morning on this forecast, hence the letter M. Hurricane warning in effect for the entirety of the island. You can see landfall currently projected for uh, Tuesday morning local time, currently now edging towards the central or eastern part of the island. Uh, earlier forecasts were a little bit farther west, so you can see that trend west of Kingston on this particular forecast. Again, there is some plus or minus on that given that it's still a two and a half ish day forecast. The whole island should be prepared for hurricane conditions. And uh, we'll, we still have a hurricane watch for portions of the southern peninsula of Haiti. It seems unlikely at this point that hurricane conditions will actually occur there. Rainfall is the primary hazard this, at this point from this storm. And as uh, Melissa crosses Jamaica, there will be disruption. Jamaica is a mountainous island and rather large, so there will be some disruption to the inner core. And it could be knocked down below major hurricane status before impacting eastern Cuba. Uh, but we'll have to uh, kind of wait and see what the structure of the storm is after crossing the island to be sure of that. And then Cuba itself is also mountainous. So as it crosses eastern Cuba, likely to be below her major hurricane strength as it moves through the Bahamas, but could still retain winds as, uh, as high as 100 miles per hour as it moves through here. Category one or two hurricane most likely. Again, some wiggle room in exactly where it may move through the Bahamas, possibly even the Turks and Caicos getting directly impacted by the core of the storm. And uh, keep in mind that after passing over the mountainous terrain of Jamaica and Cuba, uh, the core of the storm is also likely to be a little bit larger than it currently is. It's currently rather tight and compact, may be larger by the time it moves through. So a wider swath of these areas could be affected by strong winds, heavy rain, and storm surge as the storm accelerates towards the northeast. Bermuda's kind of off your screen up in here, but this uh, trajectory implies that the island of Bermuda may also need to monitor this, but we're still five plus days away from potential impacts there. So hard to be certain, but keep a close eye on the forecast. This is the heavy rainfall outlook, and this is just 
a crushing forecast. We've already had so much rain in southern Hispaniola, but we're continuing to expect more with uh, you know rainfall being measured in feet rather than inches in this part of uh, the island. And then Jamaica now expected, especially on the eastern side, to receive also possibly multiple feet of rain, flash flooding and landslides, a major concern here, along with all the other hazards from storm surge and high winds, the full gamut of dangerous conditions here expected in both Jamaica and Haiti and eventually portions of eastern Cuba as the storm moves towards the northeast. Just a devastating storm, unfortunately, is expected in this region and really hope that everyone heeds the advice of their local authorities and makes as many preparations as possible to safeguard life and property over the coming days. This will be a major event for the region. That's about it for this video. We'll continue to monitor Melissa as it intensifies and makes its move on Jamaica over the next couple of days. I'll have more frequent, smaller updates on my social media, mostly on X at Tropical Tidbits. You can also find me on Facebook and Instagram and a couple other places. Everyone, please stay safe. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.